Hello and welcome again to Florida Internet and Television's Fi TV. I'm your host, Brad Swanson. We are coming to you just a few blocks from Florida's capital. On behalf of the hundred plus thousand people that it takes to make our industry work, welcome to the show. All right, so we are here with John Lux of Film Florida. John, welcome. Thanks for having me. All right, so, so tell us a little bit about Film Florida. What do you guys do? Film Florida is a statewide not-for-profit. We represent all aspects of the film, television, and digital media industry. And of course, that's broadening by the day as new parts of the industry. We're membership-based. We have members from Pensacola down to Key West. And our primary focus is to promote and market the industry, whether it's here in the state so people understand the importance, uh -huh. or going outside the state and trying to bring more jobs and more projects. So here. everything from like the big Cinevideo tech that people know about down in Miami to your small providers in, in Pensacola? Absolutely. We we cover everything. I mean, we call, well, say film, television, and digital media, but uh -huh. really we cover everything from independent films, commercials, music videos. Uh, AR and VR, video games, mobile websites and apps, yeah. um, everything that kind of encompasses the traditional and non-traditional parts of our industry. So, so production happening every day in Florida going on throughout the year? Yeah, in a variety of different manners. Yeah, absolutely. There's hundreds of projects going on all the time. That's pretty exciting. Okay, so, so why don't you walk us back? Tell us a little <laughs> bit about the history of, of, of film in Florida. You know, I don't, I don't think you know, a novel's here, but just give us the highlights. Sure, well, the industry really started in Northeast Florida, in the Jacksonville area, with silent film studios. That's where it all started. Since then, it's progressed throughout the entire state. You know, historical projects like Swamp Thing, Flipper, uh, Miami Vice, all the way to the most current projects that we're all aware of, of Bloodline, um, Dolphin Tail, uh, Burn Notice, all the ones that you've heard about. Right. But it really started with the silent film studios up in the Jacksonville area. Well, personal plug, my, my dad was part of that. Ted Swanson brought a lot of films here to Florida, so uh, I got to kind of grow up and see that uh, first person, but uh, thanks for continuing to tell that story. All right, so, so when we think about a film coming to Florida, you know, growing up with my perspective, it's, it's a traveling circus of people, but, but you know, to talk to me about the economics of, of how that impacts our economy. Sure. Well, there's 50,000 Floridians currently that work in our traditional part of the industry. Every time a project comes to Florida, it hires those people. So a typical cable television series will spend about $100,000 a day in the local community. A feature film can spend upwards of 150 to 200,000. So we're talking about 20 to 30 million dollars a pop in a period of two to four months. It's a huge economic driver and obviously we're promoting hiring the locals which most projects do because it's the most economical. An average, um, the average annual wage for an industry professional is close to $82,000 a year which is almost double what the normal job is, the average job here in Florida. It's gone up so, a lot since I was a production assistant it certainly back has, in the day. It, it certainly has, and that's why we want to drive more of those jobs here. We right. don't want them going elsewhere because we want that money staying here in the okay. state. Uh, and, and I've heard it referred to as very green money because people come, they spend, there's no... We, we don't tax our natural resources. We don't tax our infrastructure. It's a clean, green industry, which is something we're very proud of and something that we think is good for the state because we're adding a lot of money into the economy economy without taxing our resources. Sure. So, so Florida has, has backed um, incentives uh, in the past, they've stepped away from it, so it's kind of an ebb and flow. Talk to me a little bit about other states that have, uh, have kind of capitalized on, on Florida's current kind of like we're, we're, we're holding steady right now. Talk, talk to me about that. Well, it. right now there are more than 30 states that have programs throughout the entire country. Mm -hmm. Uh, every state from New Mexico over to Delaware across the southern region of the country has a program. Mm -hmm. So we're at a competitive disadvantage. And so it's hard uh, to attract some of the business to get here. We've seen a large influx of business into Georgia over the last decade. Right. That's the largest competitor. Unfortunately, it's the closest competitor to us right now. So it, it, there's almost a little bit of a roadblock to get from Georgia down to Florida to get those projects and get those jobs and get that money into our economy. We're also losing a lot of our infrastructure and a lot of our, our people right. to Georgia, whether the it's the talent, whether they're moving there permanently or in some cases even worse, right. they're, they're leaving their husbands and wives to whoever's working in the industry, they go up to Georgia or Louisiana for weeks or months at a time, spend sure. money in that economy, 
and leave their family. And right. so those are the type of things we'd rather see that that money and those jobs and the families stay together here in Florida. Talk to us about some of the, the projects that have been produced in Georgia lately. I mean, these aren't small films. No, some of the big ones, I mean, and, and we've, uh, you know, it's hard for us when you see a film like First Man. Um, it's one of the best films that are out right now. They shot a couple of weeks on the Space Coast, which was great. We were very happy to have them. But instead of spending 30 million like they did in Georgia, they spent about 3 million in Florida. Right. And we would rather have the whole, the whole, the whole budget. Um, and there are, there are a lot of stories like that right. where you, right. you, you cringe these Marvel, days. Marvel, I mean, I know they built a, a, a replica of Ybor City in, in Georgia versus coming to the really and more that one that one is really important because a lot of the critics say well the movie flopped so it's a good thing we didn't have them here we don't judge success from our perspective on box office receipts right. we right. judge exactly. success on how much money did they spend how many Floridians did they hire of course we'd like to see all the projects that sure. come here do well but once they've made that investment yeah. We've, we see that as a success. So it's not about whether it's successful on, in a television series, whether it's renewed for multiple right. seasons or the box office. We want the money and the jobs. Yeah. Well, we know Florida will continue to just be a draw, but we also know some of those programs do tip the scales. Um, we're going we're gonna to stay tuned to uh, Film Florida to see where you go next to go recruit that business. I know you work with the state agencies, um, irregardless of where um, the, the financial support is, because you're always marketing Florida. So John Locke. Thanks, man. Appreciate Thanks for you having me. On. Appreciate you.